I'm just going to go ahead and go. I can't tell if I'm spotlighted or not. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, Easter people. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome right here where you belong, where you are loved, and you matter. It's very good to be back with you. Thank you for giving me my vacation, staycation. Thank you to Pastor Price for the coverage. And a big thank you to Stephen Ministry Leader Norma Nielsen for her wonderful prayers for the four prayer chains that went out while I was away. Four. Now, Tom and Linda Day are moving to Cheshire this Thursday, so we pray for a smooth move. They've said it is bittersweet for them to leave their home here. We do hope they'll remain on Zoom with us. We may go looking for them if they don't. I hope you've read Thursday's weekly message. If so, you know that we're going to reopen on Pentecost Sunday. May 23rd, and allow 50 people to be in the sanctuary. We'll observe a few protocols, which we'll get to you soon. We're still sort of working those out. You'll be able to sign up online for the 23rd as of May 9th, or call Karen in the church office. Worshipers are free to remain on Zoom. We're still trying to work out our internet connection too, but we're going we're gonna to do it. Our annual meeting will be held following worship on May 16th. The annual report will be emailed to members on May 9th, or members may call Karen in the church office to come pick up a hard copy. If you're writing a report, it needs to be in to Karen no later than next Sunday, May 2nd. If you know of a youth who will be entering eighth grade in the fall, who might be interested in a confirmation class to learn about and explore the faith and church membership, please let me know. Hey, we thank Jane Butterworth for reading scripture today. And now, don't you know, we let Bob Hansen go on vacation. And we're so lucky to have another deacon, Sandy Clark, as our Zoom host, along with Deacon Jan Mazo for support. Thank you so much. It's just wonderful to have other people learn this program. And now, lots of love in. Breathe in all that love from this congregation and from God and from the whole world for you. Just bring it all in. Bring in all that love. And now just... Give it back out to everyone. And you just keep that flow going, right? Love in, love out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Love in, love out. That simple. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. I got that. And now, would you join me in our gathering prayer? Let us pray. We stand in awe of you, most gracious God. You love your people, no matter the circumstance. You want us to live meaningful lives with you at the center. So we say to you, loving God, come. Send your Holy Spirit to dwell with us in our worship. Open our hearts to receive and our minds to be challenged by the teachings of Jesus the Christ. This we pray. Amen.
so joyful, just wonderful. Thank you, choir. And I'm sure all of you were just in, in full voice. I just loved that. Uh, and now as we go into something hard, um, as we move into prayer, it was big news this week that former police officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty of murder in the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. I won't say much here since I devoted Wednesday's prayer time to it, but we do pray for a greater time of change in policing, particularly with African-Americans. And may we all be aware of when and where we may have racist tendencies and work to overcome them. Just be more aware. I invite you now to close your eyes, take a deep breath, so deep that your abdomen expands and move that breath up through your chest and neck and exhale it from your mouth. Let's do that again. Expand that belly. Bring the breath up. <sighs> this time, let's do the same thing, but exhale through our nose and try to have a, um, a longer, slower exhale. So breathe. And one more time. And now you can just return to your normal breath and sit and be. And be. And in that quiet space you've created for yourself, bring to God whatever you wish and know that he is listening and is right there with you, just as close as your breath, he's right there. What's on your mind? Love it, God. We are more than our body, but we do bring our body before you. Sometimes bodies are broken. Sometimes they hurt from a variety of things. Everyone here may have some issue going on with their body. It 
It's so hard and so exhausting to live with any pain in the body, Lord. We ask you to be with us through any pain, through all that we experience in this holy body of ours. We know you love our body. Help us to love our body just as it is, no matter what, to welcome it and nurture it and treat it as softly as we would treat a child love our body. To speak kind words about our body. Give us the strength and the courage to live with our body. Help us to trust and rely on you when we are going through great bodily turmoil. Give us everything we need to see our body through. See us through any fears we may have with pain, with a diagnosis, with treatment. Comfort us and give us peace. We ask for comfort and peace for Marilyn in the loss of Bill, for Jane's mother, Lucille, Julie's father, Brian, for Lynn and Jean, for Rose, for Bob and Susan and Kai, for Kirsten's brother, Sean, for Dottie, Patty and Phil, Linda and Tom, John and Diane, and Beth's sister, Nan. Love these bodies all. All this we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Very beautiful, Elena. Thank you. We're now invited to give a portion of our time, energy, gifts, and prayers so that others may experience the love that has come to us. We gather our financial gifts together that have been mailed in or electronically deposited and offer them to God in gratitude and praise as we sing. Let us dedicate our offering. Let us pray. O oh, giver of life, behind this offering lies the busy world of our working, the office, the production line, the home, the classroom, the laboratory. Save us from creating a world where wealth accumulates and people decay. Accept this offering and our lives as willing instruments for good in your world. Amen.
Hear these words that Jesus speaks in the Gospel of Matthew. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who say these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Jane. Just gorgeous. Let us pray. Oh God, your word is a light unto our path. Help us to follow that light instead of worrying about our path. We praise you that Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith. And we give thanks for other cornerstones in our life that bring us peace. Amen. I wrote a story many years ago called The Cornerstone. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Jessie. Jessie was an average girl with an average amount of friends and involved in an average amount of activities. But the thing that wasn't average about Jessie was the way she felt about herself. It all began at age two, when Jessie took special interest in the oak tree that was in her backyard. She always pointed to it from inside the house or touched it when she was outside. When she was five, she decided to climb the tree and sit on the first branch. Jessie would spend a couple of hours up in that tree every day she could hear the wind and the birds and the leaves better there. They would call out to her, we are God's love and you are God's beloved child. You are love, Jessie, and you are loved. Jessie heard this every day. She learned much about God sitting in that oak tree. So much so that when she'd go to church and hear things that didn't sound right to her, she'd go sit a spell with her friend and listen and talk. Jessie knew that she was special, but she couldn't understand why all of the grown-ups didn't seem to have a better sense of themselves, of their nature. They didn't know who they were. Hadn't God told them too? Everyone just seemed so sad most of the time, or cynical, and so busy. She never once saw a grown-up sit in a tree. In fact, grown-ups were always doing something. They would even look for things to do, just so they wouldn't have to sit in the quiet. 
it made Jesse sad because so many people were sad. But she was grateful that she knew who she was and how much she was loved. Then something happened to Jessie. She started to grow up. Jessie's school and social calendar began to fill. She spent less time perched in her tree. She said, it's time to put away childish things. She began to learn about social identity. She learned what girls should do and what boys should do. Jessie had always known what she liked and what she was good at, but school and magazines and movies and television shows were very clear about what males and females should desire and pursue. She was confused for a time, but after some years, Jessie began to fit the mold and so fit in with everyone else just fine. When she'd come home from college during breaks, she'd look out the window and see that large oak tree. She still felt fond of it, but couldn't exactly remember why. Jessie had a satisfying four years at college and in her senior year, she met Steve and they got married. She was very happy. She had a good job. They had a child and a dog. But ever so slowly, it occurred to Jessie that she just felt like a bunch of roles, woman, daughter, wife, mother, computer analyst. And Steve was man, son, husband, father, dentist. One day when Jessie was driving her SUV to work, she allowed herself a moment of quiet and she realized that she didn't know who she was. She allowed herself to admit that she was not happy. She didn't think her husband was happy either. They talked about it and they decided that it might be a good idea to go to church. They went to church, but it didn't help. Something was wrong. Something was missing. But Jessie knew that the church had to be the answer. So she threw herself into a whirlwind of activity there. She volunteered for everything. And she could always be counted on to be the backbone of projects or mission campaigns. Social justice was the answer. She'd always heard in order to feel better about yourself, make someone else's life better. Two years later, Jessie was hammering a nail into a house she, she was helping build for Habitat for Humanity when she realized that nothing had changed for her. She still didn't know who she was. She was very sad. When she got home, she pulled out a photo album and looked at pictures of herself over the last 10 years. And then she looked at pictures of her parents. They all had the same numb, tense, and tight look. Jessie didn't know what to do, but she no longer had the heart for church or for volunteering. She and Steve decided to accept that life was just hard and that it doesn't matter who you are. There was a war going on, widespread terrorism, 
world food shortage, starving children, poverty, and injustice at every corner. Why should they have the luxury of self-awareness, self-love, and inner peace? When Jesse's parents died, Jesse and her family reluctantly moved into the home that had long been willed to her. They had gotten used to their own home and routines, but they just transferred the same routines into her childhood home, so it didn't matter where they were. One day, Jesse went outside to hang some clothes from the clothesline. And she heard a voice call out to her, hey, mom. She looked up and saw her son sitting on the very branch that had grounded her life. Jessie dropped the basket of clothes fell to her knees and sobbed. The little boy called out, Mommy, why are you so sad? Jessie was heaving her sobs and so couldn't answer him. When she was calm, Jessie asked her son to come to her. They sat on the ground and she smiled at her child and said, has God told you that you are a message of love? Oh yes, mommy, yes, and lots of other things too. Jessie's eyes filled with tears, remembering. And then she said, you must never forget what is happening to you in that tree. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, you must keep those messages right here. But the little boy just looked at her, not understanding. It was then that Jesse knew that he would forget as she had forgotten as everyone forgets. She felt a stab of pain rush through her for her son, but she vowed to herself to speak often about the tree and nature, about his belovedness on the earth and about God. Maybe he'd be a lucky one to live all of his days understanding that he is a message of love. And Jesse? <laughs> Jesse, Steve, and their young son took turns sitting in the tree. And Jesse remembered. Having remembered, she was then able to return to church where she did justice, loved kindness, and walked humbly with her God. Amen. Thank you.
Well, God bless you and your cornerstones. And may he bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and love and give you peace. And may you remember. Amen.